The case of reparations conveys reparations as a kind of sympathy check, a financial repayment meant to leave in the damage done by the moral wrong of American slavery. Tanahasi Coates, who was a journalist for The Atlantic in which the case of reparations is featured, makes the argument that the people who suffered the effects of racism during the era of Jim Crow laws are the same people who suffered from job and educational discrimination in modern day society. Through his piece, he focuses on the economic underpinnings of slavery, Jim Crow segregation, federally backed housing policy, and other aspects to show how black Americans who were prevented from building wealth or passing it on to later generations are impacted to this day. America's prosperity is tied to its history of slavery and racism. Slaves were the largest property asset in the United States and helped found the American economy. African Americans have a lot fewer opportunities to both protect themselves in an emergency and to invest in their own future. These visuals, visuals portray the disproportionality and lack of representation towards contribution of black people during early events such as the slave trade. The first piece of digital evidence allows one to recognize the horrid conditions colored people were placed under for the mere triumph of the American economy. The infographic involving median wealth within the two ethnic groups gives insight into the distribution of privilege and wealth in modern day. Finally, the GIF aids in the idea of black labor on tobacco plantation farms contributing to the wealth and prosperity in America. Solving the race problem does not exclusively mean black and white people are able to sit at the same lunch table. The essential relationship across American history between black and white people is one of exploitation and one of plunder. It is ultimately about the utilization of resources within a society that strives to degrade and sabotage social mobility. The gif of former President Obama refers to how Jim Crow laws restrict individuals from practicing their rightful civil duty. The infographic enhances this visual in that it includes the basis of these laws and how they've impacted the country. Lastly, this short video takes the viewer through the events and circumstances black people in the United States face to this day regarding the issue of slavery. Fruit, blood on the leaves, and blood at the root, black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. To this day, there is still institutionalized racism prevalent within the housing market. In the written piece, Coates refers to the struggles embedded by the introduction of Mississippi Jim Crow laws in the 1920s. These visuals refer to the undeniable impact of segregation laws. The video discusses the essence of how predatory housing contracts pose a problem to all individuals with colored skin. I would feel if I was a colored person, I would want to live in a community where I would be accepted and where I would be with the kind of people that would respect me and could probably do something for me if I needed their help. How do these colored people expect to receive that kind of treatment in a community where they know they are not welcome and where they know that they have been forced upon us? The infographic gives reliable statistics of how each race is individually affected. The report highlights this through a bizarre statistic. Between 2005 and 2007, African American first time home buyers endured a 47% decline in wealth, while white first time home buyer wealth increased by 50% during this time period. Finally, the gift symbolizes the disability and boundaries colored people face with purchasing a home. This key can be seen as an individual with a high income, an attribute many colored people struggle to reach comparatively to whites. The racism black people have suffered cannot be fixed with respect because at its heart, racism is about disrespecting people of color regardless of their circumstances. Coates states, the kind of trenchant racism to which black people have persistently been subjected to can never be defeated by making its victims more respectable. The essence of American racism is disrespect. This allows the reader to pick up on his circular argument that essentially reiterates this concept of respect. As we see elsewhere in this piece, acting more respectively does not prevent black families from being excluded or taken advantage of. The first digital visual is a written report by Donald Trump in which he argues for the need for more punishment or death penalty 
refuting on Coates' argument. The second graphic is a gif of a woman. She is arguing on the rhetoric that immigrants are discriminated against but are those that are willing to work the privileged jobs that others aren't. The third graphic is an infographic about the cycle of racism and how it impacts society. This cycle enables for racial gaps across every system. For children and family, it affects where they live, the education they receive, their income, types of food they have access to, the exposure to pollutants, and other such detrimental aspects that could harm their well-being. However, Coates is arguing that the racial oppression of black people in this country is systematic and touches nearly every single African American. It's not just a few unlucky people. Everyone is affected by the legacies of slavery. Affirmative action is a policy used by colleges and universities to improve the educational opportunities for minority groups, including minority races, genders, and sexual orientations, that are commonly historically discriminated against. This first visual, shown by Teen Vogue, shows a student advocation group for affirmative action, a practice set to diversify a student body and improve educational opportunity. The second visual is a YouTube video. It essentially describes the purpose of affirmative action. It is important that colleges have the means to implement affirmative action within their selection process. It has ruled time and again that being inclusive doesn't mean we have to be colorblind. For example, today's schools are still highly segregated and children of color still face major disadvantages. So creating a more inclusive system requires us to recognize the role of race in America. And this is arguably the best defense of affirmative action. But the Supreme Court says that schools can't use the history of racial discrimination as a defense for considering race. The only thing schools can say is, diversity is good for everyone. Finally, this GIF portrays Hassan Minhaj, a known comedian with his own Netflix original where he discusses current events. In this GIF, he's saying, yay, progress, in a sarcastic tone, as to allude to this idea that affirmative action cannot undo all prejudice placed on oppressed. For various reasons, media of all types collectively offer a distorted representation of the lives and reality of black males. In turn, media consumption negatively affects the public's understanding and attitudes related to black males, sometimes including the understandings and attitudes of black males themselves. These distorted understandings and attitudes towards black males lead to negative real-world consequences for them. This first graphic, a poster made during the Jim Crow era, depicts how white people view black people as they place unrealistic stereotypes on the group. The second video looks into the relationship between Africans and African Americans. This gives insight into how the groups view each other and their connectivity. It does this by discussing Black Panther, a movie made to represent many black individuals. Black Panther is not just another superhero movie. Culturally, it's a revolutionary moment for the Black diaspora and for white people too. Black Panther uses the fictional African nation of Wakanda to revel in the truth of black beauty and our own agency. As a child of immigrants from Ghana and Nigeria, Black Panther is a luscious celebration of the cultures that I come from. I saw kente cloth. I saw the powerful Adinkra symbols of Ghana. I saw homages to rural African traditions coexisting perfectly with modernity, science, and advanced technology. And for my fellow black women, yo, those female guardians in charge of King T'Challa's security, it's not totally fictional. Read up on the Mino of the Dahomey Kingdom and what is now Benin. Finally, I get to see leading ladies who are dark-skinned with natural hair. All this. Black Panther just makes me feel less invisible. It is an unapologetically black film and I am here for all of it. Lastly, the infographic validates this idea Coates discusses of African Americans posing as a threat to others in terms of health. As you can see by the graphic, in the Deep South, African Americans account for almost 60% of all persons living with an HIV diagnosis. The colors then code out how each area is affected and the intensity of each effect. The importance of black internationalism has become a cornerstone of African American intellectual history for decades. This first visual is a mural set place in a drug habilitation center in Detroit called African Amalgamation of Ambiguity. It is a representation of finding new and intriguing avenues to think about how black people in America saw themselves as part of a global campaign against white supremacy, imperialism, and patriarchy. 
This second visual is one describing the civil rights movement. In it, Rosa Parks is discussed as well as her impact on the community. Lastly, the gift from the television show Proud Family shows a character recognizing the pride and power black individuals hold for each other. When Coates claims the destruction was not incidental to American rise, it's facilitated that rise, and by erecting a slave society, America created the economic foundation for its great experiment in democracy. He ultimately describes how slavery made things possible for development. Sadly, the freedom that America prided itself on so much and the ability for America to offer its white and male citizens universal suffrage and other incredible opportunities was based on and at the expense of the enslavement of millions. The depressing numbers the African American community holds regarding poverty partially stem from cultural pathologies that can be altered through individual grit and exceptional good behavior. The graphics depicted focus on poverty within the African American community. The claim states that individuals can't release from the shackles of poverty with a good attitude. While this could be valid in a certain aspect, the systematic cycle of poverty is one uneasy to break from. The first infographic provides specific data that validates the idea that the concentration of poverty has been paired with the concentration of melanin. Moreover, most Americans do not believe that the government bears the main burden of taking care of the poor. The second graphic is an image featured in an LA Times article showing that children are truly the victims of poverty. However, a slackness of spirit is rarely at the root. Most of the able-bodied poor want to do work, and do so. Most share the dreams of an industrious nation. The third graphic is a GIF, humoring the view of the realistically typical circumstances of homelessness. There are people who have dodged in and out of workplaces, and employers consider them risky hires. Largely, they are men. Generally, they are unskilled. Frequently, they have taken to the ways of the streets. Ultimately, the history and call for reparations are not new, nor is it limited to African American communities. <laughs>